This is the oldest cathedral in Nicaragua. It took 100 years to be built. Officially known as the Basilica de la Asuncion, this cathedral is the largest cathedral in Central America. It has cultural and historical value in Nicaragua and in Central America. But what if I told you that this church or this cathedral holds secrets that very few people know about? Join me as we uncover the myths, legends, and the secrets of the Cathedral of Leon. So guys, right now we are located in the central park of the city of Leon. And let me just turn around so you can see the uh, what the central park looks like. Very beautiful. You have birds, pigeons, and it's a place that is transited a lot by tourists. The central park of Leon is quite cool. I mean, you can sit down, you can chill, relax, watch the birds fly. and. Um, there are a lot of vendors, by the way, around here, you know. Now, the church or the cathedral is very sturdy. I mean, it's very sturdy. As mentioned before, it took 100 years to be built. So, you know, there was a lot of work, you know, they put into building this church. It represents a transition between the Baroque era and also the uh, Neoclassicism. So it's very attractive, Ex the exterior is very attractive, and um, it's just beautiful. Masonic symbolism is a system of symbols and allegorical representations used by Freemasons, a fraternal organization that traces its origins to the local fraternities of stonemasons in the Middle Ages. Masonic symbols include both exoteric and esoteric symbols. It is a common claim made by some that masonry is associated with ancient pagan worship of false gods and occult beliefs. Some of the most commonly recognized Masonic symbols include the compass and the square, the letter G, the all-seen eye, the trowel, the level, the plumb line, the apron and the lambskin. Okay, so right now we are in the church. I'm trying not to make a lot of noise, but um, this place is so interesting. It's so beautiful, it's attractive, and it's a place where you would love to be, I love to basically learn things from. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to look for the symbolism inside the church, the symbolism that I mentioned, the, uh, the third eye and several other Masonic symbols. So this temple, this cathedral is huge and it's uh, appealing to the senses. When you enter here, you feel the sense of awness, you know, it gives you like a sense of uh, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but what I'm trying to tell you, it's, uh, it's give you like a sense of how great God is, but at the same time, 
it makes you wonder, you know, because what are these symbolism doing inside the temple of God? You know, that's a great question. That's a million dollar question. This church also has a lot of arts. And I guess that's one of the things that makes it unique. It has a lot of arts. For example, here you'll see uh, some paintings. It has around 14 different paintings of Jesus and the cross. You know, and these paintings are well made. They're well made and very attractive, very beautiful. And it paints a interesting picture of the crucifixion of Jesus. So let's look for the signs and the symbolism that we're looking for. Remember, we're looking for the triangle, the all-seeing eyes, and we're looking for the Masonic symbolisms, the birds, or any Masonic symbolism. So we are going to start from here. Let's start from here in order so we can... Um, you know do a great job searching for the information that we are looking for now i don't think they have removed it but um the rumors have been spreading since ever that there is a connection and as mentioned before how can you tell there is a connection you tell there is a connection with the symbolism if both organization shares the same symbol then you know there is a connection it's not a coincidence it's not a casualty it is something follow me it's the virgin mary these two angels i believe they're they represent cherubims i don't know if they're angels or saints but most likely they are saints so here is where you come when you're going to um, confess your sins to the priest. Um, here is where the parishioner would position himself and then the priest inside and the parishioner would confess his sin to the priest and the priest would absolve him from his sin. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the name of this, this little stuff here, but this is, this is what it looks like come over here this is holy water right now there is no water inside the bowl but uh, here is where they put holy water so here we find the first Masonic symbolism and it is this sign here this is the Maltese cross the Maltese cross or the cross of Malta is a symbol of great historical significance it has been revered since the ancient times and is particularly notable for its use by the priests of Horus, who considered it a sacred emblem. In fact, Morals and Dogmas by Albert Pike provides evidence of the priest's devotion to the Maltese cross, as it was permanently featured in religious garments and in their religious ceremonies. So here is another symbol. This is an altar. On the altar you have candlesticks and then in the middle of the altar is the image of Jesus and Mary and then above it you'll see an all-seeing eye. The triangle with the all-seeing eye. The one that is on the one dollar bill. So am I making this up? No, I'm just showing you the evidence. Now what we have to do now is speak with the, per with the priest and find out and see what will be his interpretation. Most likely he'll tell us something else, but we have to talk to him. Here's another symbol. This is the altar, the main altar, and this is what we call the pulpit. So above the pulpit on the ceiling, you will see another all-seeing eye, the triangle with the all-seeing eye. So this is basically the third Masonic symbol inside the church. There are a lot of signs and symbolisms and symbols in this church. 
So by no means I want you to believe that I'm trying to discredit the church. In Spanish we said desprestigiar. But um, what I'm doing is I'm just investigating the claims. As mentioned before, these are rumors that has been um, spreading, you know, since ever. So me as an investigator, I'm investigating whether these things are true or not. So, I mean, don't blame me. Don't hate me because I'm just an investigator. I'm not even passing verdict. I'm just connecting the dots. And that is my job as an investigator. This is the fourth symbol, the all-seen eye. The origin of the all-seen eye can be traced back to ancient Egypt. And according to Morals and Dogmas by Albert Pike, it represents the eye of Horus. Okay, so why is this guy holding an axe in his hand? I mean, you should be holding only the word of God. What's the story behind that? I'm not sure. The pentagram is a well-known symbol utilized in various occult societies and Freemasonry to evoke spirits and demons. So guys, right now what we're doing is interviewing a few people. Right now we're here in front of the church and we have some interesting questions to ask them regarding the church and the symbolisms inside the church. Este lugar es muy es bastante fascinante eh, por todo, pues la historia, eh, artes y todo. Hemos notado y he notado personalmente que hay ciertas eh, ciertos símbolos en el techo, por ejemplo, eh, el ojo de, con el triángulo. ¿Qué significa eso? En diferentes lugares se encuentra, regularmente está en el tabernáculo del Señor, donde está eh, la hostia consagrada. Y esto significa Dios te ve, Dios está en todo lugar. Desde cualquier punto que nosotros físicamente eh, invitamos a nuestra vista a revisar ese símbolo tan hermoso, nos está viendo y así cualquier eh, ciudadano, cualquier humano viene acá y, y siente la misma sensación de que Dios te ve, que Dios está contigo, que Dios te acompaña. Hay muchas personas que lo relacionan con la masonería. ¿Existe alguna conexión entre el catedral y la masonería? No existe ninguna realmente. Ese es un hecho totalmente diferente. Son pensamientos que son muy particulares del ser humano, que también son respetables, pero simplemente como humanos debemos de convivir y saber convivir no solamente con la naturaleza, sino con los pensamientos y sentimientos que religiosamente se tengan. En el catedral he visto símbolos, eh, un montón de símbolos, artes y símbolos, pero en el techo o en el cielo raso he notado que hay cuatro ojos o tres ojos eh, en un triángulo. ¿Qué significa eso? Eh, voy a, yo, yo también la he visto en varias culturas, en varias religiones en el mundo. Y una, aquí en Nicaragua pues, la, la he visto también en los, en los, ¿cómo se llama? Lo que tienen el triángulo y tiene un, un compás. En la en la, en los masones uh -huh. y, y, y ahí sé una vez participé en una que dice el ojo soy el ojo el ojo que todo lo ve todo lo ve y eso está en las religiones budistas bueno el super, precisamente esto lo hace como como que Dios Dios dice estoy estoy en todas partes soy todo y todo lo veo cree usted que existe alguna conexión entre la masonería y este catedral la, la masonería existe en demasiadas culturas religiosas, culturalmente y religiosamente. Fue yo creo que de ahí, de ahí, de ahí provienen muchas, 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 muchos símbolos religiosos de la masonería, que es más antigua que el catolicismo, imagino. Algunos dicen que representa el ojo de Dios. Entonces, para usted, eh, ¿representa el ojo de Dios o representa un símbolo de la masonería? Es que también la masonería... Y, 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 me, me platican que también proviene de aquellos sectores del lado de, de religioso. Ya están hablando de Cristo, de, los otros, de las otras culturas religiosas. Pero para mí significa 
hay alguien que nos está viendo, alguien, alguien nos hizo y alguien está viendo qué hizo con nosotros y para dónde vamos. Ya saben de dónde venimos, pero qué estamos haciendo y para dónde vamos. Alguien que nos está diciendo, cuidado, lo estoy viendo. Entonces, como que esto, bueno, mucho, muchas culturas religiosas se aprovechan de eso para decir que ellos son. En la, no, en la tierra los humanos no somos nada. Ese ojo es, 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 es espiritual, es algo de, fuera de, de la tierra. Mientras estábamos explorando la iglesia, eh, notamos que había, o sea, bastantes símbolos, artes, y me llamó mucho la atención en particular eh, un símbolo que estaba en el techo o en el cielo raso. Eh, un ojo y un triángulo. Son como, creo que son tres o cuatro eh, en diferentes puntos de la iglesia. Eh, ¿Para usted qué simboliza eso? Para mí simboliza que ese es un ojo que ve de todo nuestro alrededor y todas las personas que visitan nuestro lugar turístico. Hay personas que lo relacionan con la masonería. ¿Tiene, uh, ¿Será que hay alguna conexión entre la masonería y el catedral? Sí, en diversos lugares pues, hay muchas creencias y sí están relacionados algunos. Pues. ¿Has escuchado sobre la masonería? Sinceramente poco. Ok, guys, so right now we are here in front of the cathedral and I'm here with Katherine and Allison. And um, they're going to help us with some questions regarding the church. Eh, ¿Qué representa la catedral? para usted y para los leoneses? Para nosotros como nicaragüenses y leoneses representa diversas cosas como es algo cultural, turístico, que muchas personas de Nicaragua y de otros países vienen a conocer. Es un lugar católico donde muchas personas vienen a visitarla, a conocer su, su arte. ¿Cree usted que existe alguna conexión entre esta catedral y la masonería? Para mí sí, porque soy religiosa, soy católica y, le, y así como usted dijo, es el triángulo que todo lo ve, es una representación bíblica que tenemos nosotros los católicos. ¿Existe algún vínculo entre la masonería y la iglesia, esta catedral o la iglesia católica? Bueno, hay muchísimas teorías que, que pues rondan alrededor de la catedral, pero al final todo esto es historia, todo, todo, esto es, eh, todo esto es lo que la hace especial, el haber generado muchas teorías, el tener esa trayectoria que tiene. ¿Cree usted que los masones eh, ayudaron en la construcción de esta iglesia? Bueno, según la historia, eh, hubieron muchísimas personas involucradas eh, en la construcción de esta catedral. Por ende, no solo la Iglesia Católica estuvo involucrada en esto, entonces considero de que sí. Eh, la serpiente se encuentra abajo de la cartera donde, donde están unos túneles. Estos túneles están sellados. Ahí se encuentra la serpiente. Estos túneles, antes de la guerra, ahí se iban los padres y todos, todas las iglesias. Ahí se encuentra el túnel. Entonces el túnel ya no se abre, está sellado donde se encuentra la serpiente. ¿Estos túneles están interconectados con las demás iglesias? Sí, por las demás iglesias. Entonces, como le decía, la, esa culebra está debajo de la catedral, está sujetada de la, los pelos de la Virgen María, tiene tres pelos y ahí, eso es lo menos que le puedo decir. Mm. Y es, como están cerrados los túneles, por eso no tiene escapatoria. Mm. Pero antes contaba, narraban los, los abuelitos que esa, la punta que hasta el fortín. Mm. Ya. 
Eso es lo que sé decirle. ¿Qué pasaría si esa culebra sale? Es decir, se rompe eh, las barreras y sale. ¿Qué pasaría? Destruiría el, pa el país, uh -huh. porque es muy grande. Eh. Ah, ya. Yeah. Sí. Interesante eh, leyenda. So guys, we tried to reach out to the priest, but unfortunately we were not able to get in touch with him. So, man, let's see, maybe another time we will have the opportunity to speak to him. So symbolism is what connects religion together. For example, the old, the ancient religions use symbolism to identify themselves, you know. So inside this church, you will find a lot of symbolism. Now we are here uh, interviewing people to see if they know what these symbols really mean. Uh, unfortunately, many people know and some people really don't know. Some people choose not to talk about it. But uh, we are here to talk about it. What do you think about those symbolism? Do you think there is a connection between the church and Freemasonry? Symbolism, arts, and imagery has been around since ever. Whether this church is connected to Freemasonry, we can't tell for sure. But the symbolisms are there. So you be the judge. You be the judge whether there is a connection between the cathedral and Freemasonry. Guys, we have come to the end of the tour. If you like my videos, my content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.